I want to address you, the people of Iran. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach. There is nowhere we will not go to protect our people and protect our country. When Iran is finally free, and that moment will come a lot sooner than people think, everything will be different. Iran will be a lot will be free a lot sooner than people think. That is what Netanyahu said in a recent video message to the people of Iran, essentially giving us a hint that he intends to engage in war with Iran. I mean, what is he trying to say there? Now, the real concern is whether Israel will expand the war to Iran, which would be a disaster, mostly for America, which of course will fight that war on behalf of Israel and bankroll that war as we've been bankrolling Israel and providing the weaponry for the destruction it's been causing in Gaza and now Lebanon as well. Now following Israel's assassination of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut, Lebanon on Friday, Iran did issue threats of retaliation. Iran's supreme leader has said that the death of Hezbollah's leader Hassan Nasrallah will not go unavenged a day after he was killed in an Israeli airstrike in Lebanon. Earlier on Saturday, Ayatollah Khomeini urged Muslims to stand by Hezbollah with their resources and help, but did not promise to retaliate for the strike that killed Nasrallah. The fate of this region will be determined by the forces of resistance with Hezbollah at the forefront, he said. Now, as for Israel, Matthew Seville, a military sciences director at the Royal United Services Institute said that Netanyahu may instead be tempted by a generational opportunity to deal a setback to Iranian regional influence. And he has already to some extent, especially when it comes to decapitating the leadership of Hezbollah and causing some serious damage to Hamas in Gaza as well. But the question is, how far is this gonna go and will Netanyahu and the Israeli government dragged the United States into a regional war. Now, just a week ago, the president of Iran said that they do not want a war with Israel, but it's not really up to Iran. It's really up to Israel, which is obviously calling the shots when it comes to the conflicts in that region, with the United States enabling it, of course. So, yeah, so classic neocon speech there. Hey, don't scroll away. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. First of all, he says it in English as if the people who speak Farsi in Iran are going to be moved by this speech. No, this is intended for an American audience. The media and the politicians are just using it as an excuse to justify what they were gonna do anyway. And it's also meant for gullible people, like he's trying to liberate the people of Iran. He's gonna liberate them by dropping a bomb on their heads. So this is the neoconservative ideology that we saw in Iraq, which is as soon as we bomb them into oblivion, they will love us and they will greet us as our as their liberators. And you know, I don't know if Israel plans to occupy Iran as well. They usually occupy wherever they attack. But oh my God, once we kill you and occupy you, you will be free. Uh, wow, that seems really compelling. And I bet once you start dropping bombs on Iranian citizens. They're gonna just rush to your side like they did in Iraq. They rushed to our side. You know that Dick Cheney and other neocons said that we would be greeted as liberators. Right. And and, and then out? Yahoo, by the way, was one of the neoconservatives that pushed for the Iraq war, not for Israel to get involved. In fact, Israel said they were gonna get involved and then chose not to. And they said, America, you go fight it. Why would I get involved? Why would I lose my precious, precious citizens? The most valuable citizens on earth, the rest of your citizens are useless, we can kill them anytime we like, okay? No, America, you go kill those people in Iraq for us, and you go spend a couple of trillion dollars, and by the way, it runs four times larger. Why do you think the US moved a bunch of aircraft carriers, submarines, etc., ground troops into the region? So that Iran could hit one of them. And then we can go, Oh my God, we have a right to defend ourselves here. Let's go fight this war for Israel. So he just told you he's gonna go into Iran. He said it's gonna happen sooner than you expect. So when Netanyahu warns of a war, that is the one time he is not lying. He he will give you exactly the war that he has promised you. So let's just really think about this. Like let's think it through. And we're probably gonna think it through way more than Netanyahu and the Israeli government is gonna think it through. Or the US government. Or the US government. Okay, so uh Netanyahu ends up dragging the United States into a war with Iran. Let's say, I guess, best case scenario, the US succeeds in pursuing regime change in Iran. And then what? 
I mean, like what happened in other countries that we've uh, pursued regime change in? Oh, in uh, a lot of cases, it creates a power vacuum, no? Yeah. And what happens when there's a power vacuum, Jenk? So, and a terrific point, uh, because of obviously democracy and, and uh, happiness and unicorns will flourish all right. over Iran once we've invaded them and started a giant uh, war with a power vacuum. W the same thing that happened in Iraq and worse will happen in Iran, which will, which is that once you have that power vacuum, who steps in to fill it? Do you think it's moderates? It's never moderates. Moderates do not win in war. So we're going to create a civil war in Iran. And when we do, the most radical fundamentalist Muslims will uh, arise, even more fundamentalist than the Ayatollah. Mm. And they will gain power and then Israel will go, you see, we have to attack them even more. And we have to occupy them even more. And that's I what mean, they do every single time. Well, where do you think Hamas came from? There was no Hamas before 1948. There was no Hezbollah before 1982 or 1985, right? They came out, well, Hezbollah was created when Israel invaded Lebanon. Exactly, okay. yeah, in the 80s. Yeah, so who created Hezbollah? Israel did, by constantly attacking its neighbors and never ceding any territory that it has conquered. It just subjugates the local people and says, I'm gonna do it forever. Netanyahu says, that there will never be a Palestinian state. And he's and now if he attacks Iran, that would be, let's see, Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, and Yemen. Yemen was just Iraq recently too. bombed. And well, Iraq, they haven't attacked recently. Oh, I thought so, they did. Maybe I'm mistaken. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't think so. So five neighboring countries, Netanyahu has bombed or threatened to bomb when it, you include Iran, right? And he says, Oh, golly, gee, you see how the Muslims are so violent. Mm -hmm. You see how violent those guys, we just are defending ourselves. We only bombed five countries or four so far. Now, some might argue, okay, well, I mean, Iran is issuing threats against Israel, right? They're threatening to retaliate. Yes, they are threatening to retaliate. But remember, they have threatened to retaliate many times before and did not make good on that promise. A good example is actually when they promised to avenge the assassination of Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran back in July. They haven't retaliated for that. And in fact, when they do retaliate, the one time they retaliated during this war, they let Israel and the United States know our drones are coming. They will be there in a few hours. And the reason why there were no casualties and no real damage as a result of that retaliation by Iran is because they intentionally did it that way to calm or ease the frustrations of their own people for not retaliating while also preventing a broader regional war because Israel, uh, I'm sorry, Iran does not want to go to war with Israel and the United States, but Israel keeps provoking, provoking, poking Iran, you know, uh, threatening them. I mean, that, that threat that you just saw was from Netanyahu. Yeah, so I want to juxtapose that to how Israel lied about the ceasefire in Lebanon in a minute. Uh, but first, are they not supposed to retaliate? Is there expectation in Israel and America that we get to bomb every country in the world? And if they dare to fight back even in the tiniest way, that we have to bomb them again and invade them again and attack them again. Yes, that, that is that is the thinking. Jim. Yeah, and, and it's I like, it's okay if the corrupt politicians here in America say that because APAC paid them. Uh, but I don't want anyone being misled into thinking that that's a normal thing. So what Israel's doing here is they're going to uh, Iran and they're punching him as hard as they can in the face and going, I had to do it. Why, why did you punch him? Because he might retaliate. <laughs> No, he's much more likely to retaliate after you punch him in the face. That's exactly right, <laughs> and I think that's intentional. Oh, right? Of course, of course it's intentional. Yeah, it's more like punching them in the face and saying, what are you gonna do about it? Come on, come on, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. Now, of course, uh, Joe Biden is very concerned about Iran retaliating. He is very concerned about war with Iran. Um, and so he's doing everything he can to uh, bolster Israel's defenses, even though Israel keeps provoking Iran for a, a larger war in the region. Um, now, the Pentagon said in a statement on Sunday night that uh, should Iran, its partners, or its proxies use this moment to target American personnel or interests in the region, the US will take every necessary measure to defend our people. Remember, we already had 40,000 troops in the region. 
And recently, the Biden administration announced that they would be sending additional US troops to the region in order to bolster the defense of Israel. Now, Defense Department spokesman General Patrick Ryder also noted a significant amount of capability in the region, including the USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group. Now, regardless of what Iran decides to do, there have already been some retaliatory strikes against Israel, as I mentioned earlier. But missiles have been intercepted and caused no damage. And Israel and the United States were warned hours ahead of time that they were doing this retaliatory strike, mostly to send a message to their own people. But it doesn't matter. I mean, I just feel like this is now escalating day by day and the escalations are more frequent jank and more intense and i i just i at this point have no hope because there are no brakes on the car yeah none and we enable that by sending them blank check after blank check and and the more wars they start and the more death and mayhem there is america goes oh do you need a bigger check as if to reward their war crimes and crimes against humanity. Okay, so let, let me do the juxtaposition that I mentioned. I'm gonna go to graphics four and five from the previous story about Lebanon. Because while Iran was saying, we are going to attack, it's going to take many hours, you can shoot them down, go ahead. Here's what Israel did about the peace negotiations in Lebanon. Biden administration officials are also defending their decision to announce the breakthrough of a ceasefire proposal last week between Israel and Hezbollah that quickly turned into an embarrassment for the administration when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu made clear Israeli forces would instead continue to pound the Lebanese militant group. So CNN explains that we thought we had a deal. 11 Arab nations signed on to it, Hezbollah signed on to it, everybody's US signed on to it, and Israel said we signed on to it. And so Biden came out like an idiot, like he always is, and he comes <laughs> out and he goes, uh, okay, Netanyahu is in favor of a ceasefire deal. Yay, the Israelis are so wonderful, right? And it turns out that the Israelis were lying all along. Yep. And in fact, they were using that as a cover for the massive bombing they were about to start in Beirut. So as soon as Biden announced the cease or the Biden administration announced the ceasefire publicly, the Israel then humiliates them by starting the bombing of Lebanon and the invasion of Lebanon. So in this case, there is absolutely no question reporting from CNN that every single party, including Hezbollah, had agreed to a ceasefire in Lebanon, including Israel. And Israel violated it, lied about it, and did an aggressive strike instead. They chose war instead of peace. There's no question. One more quote from CNN. US officials argue that Israel changed its mind Wednesday night after the proposal, which was signed on to by 11 other allies, was announced. Israel decided they had an opportunity to target Nasrallah, a US official said. Yes, an opportunity created by the fake ceasefire they were pretending to do when they had always intended to go to war. Exactly. And look, I'll say one last thing here. Uh, I don't want, like, does, did Iran fund Hamas and Hezbollah? Almost certainly. Did Hamas and Hezbollah at different times attack Israel? Certainly. Whether it was effectual like October 7th or ineffectual like Hezbollah has been doing for the last 11 months, it's not like they haven't counterattacked. But I don't want you to think, oh, it's because oh, they're just rabid anti Semites and they were just trying to kill Jews for no apparent reason. They are resisting the 57 year occupation of the Palestinians in concentration camps. And so I checked the definition of concentration camps. It is a ethnic group that is put somewhere for so called security or political reasons. That is exactly what the West Bank and Gaza Strip are. And they're saying, we've only been running concentration camps for 57 years. Can you believe they're resisting us? Okay, so that's what this is about. And finally, if you're wondering, really though, does Israel pretend they're gonna do peace, but then allow for some attacks so they could counterattack viciously and take more land? Well, we all know they already knew about October 7th. That's reported all over the Israeli press, American press. Netanyahu knew October 7th was coming and conveniently didn't do anything. And then said, "Oh my god, we have a right to defend ourselves. Let's go get him." And he annihilated Gaza and now he's invading Lebanon. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. 
you'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.